going to turn now to that ugly attack in Egypt on CBS News correspondent Lara Logan. It happened in those chaotic moments Friday when the crowds learned that President Mubarak was out. And for the latest details, let's go to Martha Raddatz in Washington. Martha, CBS News isn't saying much about this incident, but they did describe it as a brutal and sustained sexual assault. They did, George. You know, we know dozens of journalists attacked in Egypt before President Hosni Mubarak stepped down, but this brutal attack occurred in the midst of what looked to be a celebration. February 11th, cheers of joy in Cairo as President Mubarak resigned. But deep within the jubilant crowd at Tahrir Square, a nightmare was apparently unfolding as CBS News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Lara Logan and her team were surrounded by what a CBS News statement said was a mob of more than 200 people whipped into a frenzy. Lara was covering the celebrations in Cairo last Friday when she was surrounded by a mob, sexually assaulted and beaten. She was rescued by a group of women and Egyptian soldiers. Logan had been reporting from Egypt since the protests began. This is what can happen to you in Egypt if you try to expose corrupt policemen. Days later, she was detained and interrogated. In an interview with PBS's Charlie Rose, Logan said the Egyptian army labeled her and her crew spies. They let us know in no uncertain terms that they were tracking us, that they knew who we were. They, f they photographed us when we were blindfolded and my, my colleagues um, Max McClellan and Don Lee were handcuffed. But Logan soon returned to Tahrir Square. She has fearlessly reported from dangerous places all over the globe. But now with a family and young children, she recently told CBS's 60 Minutes Overtime, it's yet another worry. I have to think about my, my children growing up without their mom. I mean, I don't want to think about it. I hate to think about it. Logan has now been released from the hospital and is back at home here in Washington with her husband and two children recovering. And George, of course, we wish her our very best. We certainly do. We hope she's back to work soon. Okay, thanks, Martha.